Many of us grew very, very sick of this imbalance. I'd actually, I accidentally found myself leading a dissension of the undesirables, so to speak, and I didn't mean to, but in every way, I, I was biblically doing what I felt was right, what I'd seen in verse after verse. And every time I had the leadership angry with me when I would prove it to them scripturally, I, I, I could use the scripture on them, and they hated that even more. That was like the most inexcusable thing in the world. I'm like, weren't we supposed to? Isn't that what we, we learned about the Bereans? It was a constant battle. And it didn't help that all of my closest friends that was in that little huddle with me, uh, you know, that I formed, you know, they were just thirsty to rise up in leadership and in the ranks of the church. And they often ended up forgetting all that I'd done for them when I was the only one who would even give them the time of day. And moving on without me, I just see it got very lonely, very quickly. I really did. I no longer enjoyed this fabulous kingdom. The situation was so horrible that the only thing I could do was uh, study and learn. So I learned a lot, I learned an awful lot, and I learned many things that I'm sure they wouldn't want me to know or think. I started working on a book that I hoped was, uh, I hoped to be able to print for the leadership, maybe sort of give out for free. Then later on I thought, well, we had our own personal church publishing company called the uh, DPI, the Disciples Publishing International. I thought maybe I'll send my, my copy over to them. I, uh, I don't know, this deluded idea that I could make them see the error, some area, uh, error of their ways, was sad, really. This uh, book I was working on was called The Stumbling Block. It was the first version of it, anyway. And one of my own roommates found it on my computer, and they, he, he read parts of it, and immediately told me that I needed to just basically erase it, destroy it, get rid of it altogether, because I brought up some horribly critical ideas against the leadership and apparently it didn't it, it didn't matter that I was right he fully admitted that I may have been but that it was critical and therefore dangerous like, what kind of thinking is that so after two and a half years of living with brothers and from the church fights with the leadership constant lectures at my failure I I hit one hell of a low I I was walking on a prayer walk and crying out to God and suddenly I felt this horrible pain in my side. It only got worse the next couple of days. I was convinced that uh, it was probably appendicitis. I was also convinced I didn't care. It hurt horribly. And I know that, I, that that's lethal and I didn't care. I never told anybody and I never saw treatment. Uh, I was going to finish my book, leave it to everybody, and just let the appendix kill me. I can do whatever they want to. I was done. I was done with planet Earth. Uh, I wanted to die and get off this miserable planet. <sighs> that is how wonderful this fabulous kingdom really was. Kingdom of God my ass. Our apartment's lease was up and I had nowhere to go but to move back in with my family with no job left and on the edge of a nervous breakdown and serious need for some psychological help that would never come. For I, I didn't have the money. My family lived way north of Atlanta in a town called Ackworth on Lake Alatoona. They had two dogs and one of the brothers had taken in a dog without any basking any of us in the apartment uh, first, so I ended up having to bring him with me because he abandoned the dog with us. It was a Shih Tzu named Popcorn, and he was I thought he looked like a little little soccer ball. So now here I was, I'd fallen away. I felt like a lost soul. Although in a sim sense, I felt like maybe I, I didn't fall away, I felt too or something, or like I was falling towards something better, or like I was being led away, I don't know. Overnight, I went from having people I recognized everywhere I went, and I'd say hi to them, and I'd hug them, and and everything, instead to wanting to hide from everybody everywhere in case I recognized one of them, because I didn't want to have to see one of them and pretend. Hi, hug, whatever. I stayed instead in my room, and I studied, and I would take our dogs out to the lake behind our home uh, 
let them splash around and be dogs. And I'd sit in my folding chair and I'd read for hours books about religion, books on scriptures, alternative texts and scriptures that never made it in the Bible that were, you know, the Nagamadi Library, uh, Dead Sea Scrolls, things that were recently discovered. I was trying to find out what went wrong. I was trying to find my kingdom. I, I, I had been promised a kingdom. And if I gave up everything I sought at first, it, it would supposedly come to me, but it wasn't coming. A kingdom where men would give you the shirts off their back if, if, if you were in need, and instead of preach to you because you weren't working hard enough to earn your own damn shirt. The well-to-do weren't given special consideration, but the needy were, like we were saying. And nobody was left shepherdless and unguided and unguarded and unloved in a world of torment and uh, hate and confusion and hurt and pain like our, our world is. How had it gone so horribly wrong? Where could it be? I tried hard to, to hold on to that promise from God, to hold on to that hope that I'd find it. It was all I could think about, and I searched constantly in books and books when the dogs were out there splashing around and running and, and being silly. I'm sitting there looking for this kingdom. So, this is the kingdom of God, huh? Well, let's see. Here's what our Old Testament predicts about this fabulous new kingdom. In Ezekiel chapter 34, God is getting onto all of the people in power for not taking care of the sheep. He says he'll come down and do it himself. In Isaiah 11, we basically have this strange thing told us where the wolf will live with the lamb, the leopard will lie down with the goat, and all these animals that should be eating each other will get along together. And it says a child will lead them. But we don't treat children very well. We tell them to shut up. They are to be seen and not heard. So I don't see that happening in this kingdom either. And then let's not forget Paul talking in 1 Corinthians 13 about the body, as I had already mentioned, of a, a unity. I don't need you. Uh, you can't say that to each other because you're different. Everybody together as one. Where is this? Where the hell is this happening? I don't see it happening. Certainly not in churches. I see more of this happening with the followers of the insane clown posse. And I love them for it. <laughs> I'm a juggalo, bitch! So if this is what you're expecting in a church, then you are seriously going to be disappointed by the track record of Christian Christianity, the Christian church, churches in general, any, any church I've ever seen. You know, not that it ever got a story straight in the first place. Uh, remember, Isaiah said he'd uh, turn their swords into plowshares and live in peace. But Jesus says... In Matthew 10... Brother will betray brother to death, and a father his child. Children will rebel against their parents and have them put to death. All men will hate you because of me, but he who stands firm to the end will be saved. He also says later on that, uh, you know, do not suppose that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to turn a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies will be the members of his own household. Well, we've certainly seen a lot more of this than we have peace come from this religion. You'll also be seriously disappointed if you attend any present-day church that uh, I've ever seen. I don't care how different you think yours may be. Uh, I don't see them really making the effort to bring equality and feed the hungry without expectation or a lack of gossip and judgment and some kind of drama. I, Although I, I, I seem to be, I, I know some of them are supposed to be a bit more progressive, don't get me wrong. Maybe there are some out there that are doing good, but there's not enough. And let me just say, I've had a great deal of reason to reject those three answers that I was given in that study now. Plenty of them. What is the kingdom? It's the church? Yeah, well, uh, I'm not buying that answer anymore. Therefore, we still have a question unanswered. As a matter of fact, three questions that are completely unanswered. What is the kingdom of God? When does it come? How does one find it? How does one get into it? Those are answers that wouldn't come to me for a couple more years yet, and it was a horrible awakening when I finally did find those answers.